Hey, what is up mortals it is welcome to season 1 part 3 of what if Deku had Shazam powers now with that out of the way, let's get into the story. Last time, Izuku was chosen to be All Might's successor, and was given one for all. Then Izuku used one for all to get into UA, passing the tests and getting the highest score UA has ever gotten. The day before Izuku starts at UA All Might contacts him like and congratulates him for getting into UA just like in canon. However, All Might does warn Izuku not to use the powers the wizard gave him unless absolutely necessary. This is because if people learn Izuku has all this power, lots of eyes will go on to him and what you can all do. We then jump to the next morning we're in the start of Izuku's career at UA. Izuku wakes up, grabbing his things and getting changed before quickly trying to head out saying, Talk to you later mom then giving her a hug, and Ko gives him a smile saying, I'm sorry for saying you couldn't be a hero Izuku, it's just, they said you would be quirkless, and Ko then starting to tear up. Although Izuku stops leaving and wipes in Ko's tears away, telling her, Mom, what you said only made me push myself harder and made me want to be a hero even more, and Ko smiles at this before Izuku continues saying I really need to get going Mom, love you, then closing the door heading for the train station. Izuku then gets to his class at UA, opening the door, not contemplating the bad people that could be in his class. However, instead he accepting whoever was in his class was in his class. Nonetheless, once Izuku opens the door most of the class stops talking, specifically those who were in his test area. Ada then walking up to him saying, Hello, I'm Tenya Ada, you must be Izuku Midoriya. I would like to know how you figured out the secret way of getting points. This somewhat overwhelms Izuku. And he starts to reply but is interrupted by Bakugu, who pulls him aside saying, How did you do it Deku? How did you cheat it you quirkless loser? Izuku just stares at Bakugu. But once again before Izuku can speak, Aizawa and Achoko walk in, and everyone shuts up and quickly gets to their seats. Aizawa's talk with the class goes the same as canon, where he lectures them briefly for not quieting down quick enough and then telling them off their quirk assessment test. Once getting to the testing grounds, Aizawa says we are here to test your quirk's potential. Hey Midori, you got the highest score in the entrance exam in junior high. What was your best result for the softball throw? Hearing this shocks Bakugu causing him to have little explosions go off in his hands in rage. Not even noticing Bakugu and his many explosions, Izuku replies, 60 meters, now try throwing it with your quirk. Izuku then charges up to 6% of full cow and throws the ball getting 480 meters. Seeing Izuku use a quirk infuriates Bakugu. Who rushes at Izuku saying you damn nerd tell me how you did that. Then before Aizawa can even react to stop Bakugu, Izuku has moved. Izuku moves so quickly everyone's barely able to see him move to Aizawa's side. This shocks everyone even more, and Bakugu stops with his mouth wide open saying you damn nerd, and storming back into the group of students. Seeing all this makes the class excited. And some even say that this will be fun since they can use their quirks. Although, hearing this Aizawa says oh, you think this will be fun well let's up the stakes whoever gets the lowest score will be expelled. Hearing this shocks everyone making most of the class nervous but, Izuku tries to shrugs it off. The rest of the tests go by smoothly for Izuku, and he even gets first place out of the class. Also, the rest of the class results are the same. After going through all the tests, Minda gets the lowest score and is told he is expelled. This surprises Yeyarazu. Who asks you were serious about the explosion? Yes, if you can't make it in this simple test you have no place here. Minta then runs off heavily crying, and saying how am I going to get with the babes now? This makes Izuku feel bad for him. And once Aizawa tells the class that they are dismissed, he goes up to Aizawa to try and reason with him. Mr. Aizawa, can I speak with you for a second? Sure Midoriya, what is it? W. Well sir, I don't think it's really fair for you to expel Minda here since not everyone has quirks that are helpful for these kinds of tasks so, is there any way you can not expel him? Aizawa looks at Izuku with a surprised look saying, Are you trying to tell me how I should teach my class? No, sir, it's just I thought. Yes, you thought and that's your problem here. I make the calls for my class but, since it concerns you so much on what my plans are, I was never going to expel him forever. He'll be back here tomorrow. It's a strategy to show students the brink of losing the chance of going here and seeing that pushes them to be even better. Aizawa then leaves Izuku saying, I'll see you tomorrow. Before we get back into the story, I would like to say that we've got a second channel called Anime Deep Dive. Anime Deep Dive goes over the hard facts of the anime presented. Now in case, you guys didn't know, we have a third channel called Anime Theory. Anime Theory mainly focuses on a large variety of mind-boggling anime theories. If you are interested in content like this, please go check the description below or click the eye icon in the top right corner. Now with that out of the way, let's get back into the story. Once changing, Izuku goes to leave talking with Ida about what Aizawa had said to him about Minta. Ida then pauses for a minute after getting told about Izuku and Aizawa's talk. 
Then saying, well Midoriya, it is his class and he has the knowledge on what helps push us into becoming the best of heroes. So, if he believes this will help Minta, I would trust his judgment. Although, before Izuku is able to respond Yuraraka walks up to them, and has the same chat with Izuku and Ida as in canon. The next day after their regular classes, All Might enters saying I am here. So, today I will be training you in the art of battle. Now, go get changed into your hero costumes and meet me down at Ground Beta. Everyone's hero costume is the same looking except Izuku's. His costume looks like what he wears in his transformed form but, without the cape. The pairings are the same as cannons and everyone's battles happen the same except Izuku and Yuraka versus Ida and Bakugu. The first significant change is Izuku isn't as nervous when he's told he has to fight Bakugu. Instead, Izuku's nervous at the fact that he got grouped up with Yuraka. Another change is that their strategy for the battle wearing cannon they tried to split up they decide it would be better to stay as a group instead. Once getting into the building Yuraka uses her quirk on herself and Izuku powers up to 6% then going through the building as quickly as he can. However, once clearing the first floor they run into Bakugu. Bakugu is surprised by them not expecting to run into them so quickly so he shoots an explosion at the two of them. Seeing the explosion coming and knowing he can't dodge it because of its proximity Izuku steps in front of Yuraka, taking the brunt of the blast to his back. Then once Izuku takes the hit he turns around and rushes Bakugu as quickly as he can with the capture tape in hand. Although once Izuku rushes out of the smoke to capture Bakugu, Izuku sees no one there. This causes Izuku to quickly look around for a second before coming back to Yuraka to check on her. Once getting back to her Izuku asks Yuraka, Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, what about you? I'm okay, let's keep going. They then move upstairs, certain that the weapon has to be on this floor. After a brief search, Yuraka and Izuku hear a ruckus in a room and presume that it must contain the device in it. Izuku then comes up with the plan to bust in through a side wall instead of the one entrance since it would give him the element of surprise, unlike if he went in the way they would be expecting. As well, deciding once they bust in, he'd distract Ida and Bakugu while. At the same time, Yuraka goes in through the main entrance and goes to touch the device. Everything is silent before they hear the sound of Izuku yelling smash. Once smashing through the wall, Izuku sees a huge explosion coming towards him. Side note, this explosion is from one of Bakugu's gauntlets. Izuku throws another smash at the explosion but, Izuku's smash only partly depleted some of the explosion. After the explosion, everything is quiet in the observation room, until everyone hears Izuku, who says, Is that all you got Kaken? Then having the smoke clear and everyone seeing Izuku now with burns on both his arms. Immediately after seeing Izuku hurt All Might says, Bakugu you are not allowed to use your gauntlets again without forfeiting the match you could have killed him. Bakugu tusks at this saying, We won't need them again to beat Deku and the girl. While at the same time, Eater rushes Izuku trying to take him down. Izuku sees this coming however, and kicks the dust up into Ida's eyes blinding him. Then with Ida's vision impaired, Izuku is able to use the capture tape on him before Bakugu gets to them. The second Bakugu gets nearly close enough to attack Izuku Bakugu sets off an explosion blocking Izuku's line of sight, then redirecting himself to go for an above attack, just like what he did in their first cannon fight. Getting hit again causes Izuku to fall to the ground then throwing a kick at Bakugu who easily dodges it going in for another counter attack. After hitting him with this attack, Bakugu continues to just wail in on him hitting him with attack after attack, and Izuku is helpless to stop him merely, he is just trying to defending himself. Then during the barrage of attacks Bakugu hears All Might shout over the speaker's hero team. Wins. Once hearing this, Bakugu stops his attacks looking up to see Yuraka touching the weapon. Seeing Izuku beat him causes Bakugu to freeze, where he then just looks down at the beaten Izuku get carried out by the infirmary robots finally realizing how much he had hurt Izuku in that one attack. Side note, All Might was yelling at him to stop, but he was so caught up in the moment that he had tunnel vision on just hitting Izuku over and over. Although, before Bakugu can think about it anymore he hears Ida say, a little help Bakugu. This snaps Bakugu back to reality, where he then helps Ida out of the capture tape, then leaving without saying a word to either Ida or Yuraka. As stated earlier, the other battles happen the same as canon the only differences during this time is the class's reaction to Bakugu coming back where when he came into the observation room the class tried to get some distance from him. As well, when All Might asked the class's thoughts on the things that they could have improved upon during the battle where Momo said, Bakugu got too invested in the exercise taking the attack on Midoriya too far, and using his gauntlets in that close of the vicinity to the device that was supposed to be treated as a bomb was stupid because it could have set it off in a real situation. Izuku's problem was that he could have set the bomb off by breaking down that wall but, his plan was still solid if they had that info. Ada's problem was that he rushed Izuku without Bakugu's aid which caused him to get captured, despite everyone else's negatives in battle. 
Uderaka was the MVP since she was able to not get hurt or captured and was able to get the device without notice. All Might looks at Yeyurazu with a smile saying, Yes, all that and a couple of other things you missed here and there. Also thinking, at the same time how good she is to be able to observe all that so early into her time at UA. After all the other students fights Bakugu leaves not being confronted by Izuku. Because he was in so much worse condition than in canon, requiring more kisses from Recovery Girl to get healed. Sometime after this, we see the electing of the class president where Izuku is voted up as the class president like canon, and Yeyurazu is elected as his vice president. However, unlike canon Izuku isn't scared of being chosen instead saying thanks to those who voted for me with a slight smile on his face. As well, later when the school sirens go off Izuku sees that it's the media who are outside, he uses his quirk to get above the crowd of students then informing them. Then a couple of days later, All Might goes and defeats various villains on his commute to school but, since he was healed by Shazam he's able to meet the students at the USJ. When the class heads to the USJ Izuku doesn't force everyone into a single file line unlike Ada where instead, he just letting everyone figure it out. Once arriving at the USJ, they meet with All Might and Thirteen, who then explain what they will be doing at the USJ while walking over to the top of the steps before a purple mist appears in the center of the USJ. Once the villains appear, All Might tells Thirteen and the kids, those are real villains. Thirteen go and get the kids out of here Aizawa and I can handle this. Thirteen nods at this and starts heading to the exit with the kids. Sadly though, this is the end for today's video. But will All Might and Aizawa be able to beat the villains? Will Class 1A even be able to escape? If this video gets enough likes we will find out next time. Thank you all for watching the video to the end. Now there is a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. On behalf of We The Celestials I'd like to thank the writer for this video, as well as the editor for this video. Their details will be in the descript. If you're a voice actor, editor or writer, or you're interested in becoming one of those, go to the recruitment discord in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us. That's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're interested and hit that like button if you liked the video. Until next time, peace out mortals, have an amazing day.